So last time we ended up with the head and uh, today we are going to continue with the body and uh, just before we start um, we need to have some kind of reference to know how high the body will be so what I'm going to do is just create a sphere so it's not a clay cell object it's just a sphere right and I'm just going to scale it to what I think you know the, the, the size of the body would be so it will help me to place the, the rest of the scene so meaning the, the feet and the ground so I think, yeah, something like this sounds about right. And just for fun, I'm going to create, just duplicate this sphere and squ squash it like this. And just try to have like a, a point of reference for the foot. So let's, yeah, let's say something like this approximately. Like it, it can be very rough, but it just like, I need this to know which size to make my clay cell containers and everything. Doesn't need to be perfect more like this yeah I think we are good with this so what we are going to do I'm just going to uh, put this in an object here so I can remove it easily and uh, I'm going to create a new 3d object clay cell container and I'm going to rename it right away and it's going to be the body um, what I like to do is just create a add clay directly so now I have a cube inside and if I just move the body container you will see my cube is here and so what I like to do is usually just expand the, the cube to the almost to the bound so when I move my um, my body I mean the clay container sorry I have a better estimate of where exactly my bounds can stop so what I will do is put this approximately where the, the body will be and right away I will do just like the beak and the, some details we did before I'm going to scale down the container let me just hide the, the reference object I did. So now I have my container there and uh, I scale it down to have more resolution to approximately half the size. So this is what I usually do. And uh, But now you see the container is way too small because the body will go further than that. So what we can do is increase the bounds. So you just hit the plus button there, just like we did last time. And for now, I'm going maybe to lower a bit the clay cell detail to something like 50. Because just like when you model in ZBrush or when you draw, like it's easy to start with very rough shape and then refine as you go. So I'm just going to take my cube. I'm going to set it as a sphere because as you can see, the body is mainly composed of, of uh, round shapes. So I'm going to scale it up. And like my PC is not really good, so it's already lagging quite a lot. So I'm just going to, to lower even the, the, bound, the click cell detail and lower the bounds. Something like this is good. So anyway, I'm going to scale it down approximately like this. I can use my reference just to be sure, you know, I can move it. And I'm going to color my clay in red so you know which one is a real Unity object and which one, which one is a clay. So this is, a, yeah, this is good. And uh, I'm going to do uh, the same trick as I did with the head, meaning I'm just going to slice a bit the bottom of the sphere and round it up a bit because I think it breaks nicely the shape of the sphere. So I think this is pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new clay. So if you followed the last video, you know, I prefer to just, instead of going to the clay container and add clay, I just prefer to just duplicate what I have. And uh, so now I have two spheres and uh, I'm going to change this one into a cube. I'm going to set, set the blend to something very low and put it in subtractive mode. So now when I move down this cube, I'm subtracting to my sphere, okay? And if I scale it, larger than the sphere I can remove some of the sphere and uh, why I am doing this is because the red sphere that you're seeing is, is going to be the shirt and you will see what we are going to do is I'm going to select back the first sphere I did I'm going to duplicate it and uh, so now I have the sphere the cube that's removing from the sphere and the new sphere okay and I'm going to change this one to a blue color and I'm going to remove the round and remove the slice so I have a perfect sphere and as you can see now if I move it up a bit and scale it down it kind of feels like this would be like his belly you know and the red part would be his shirt and um, I don't know if you realize why we did it this way because there is something I did not explain in the previous video but I'm going to explain right now is when you add clays so I'm going to add just to show you why we did this I'm going to add a cube there so I'm going to put it in subtract mode and when you see what happens when it's in a sub mode basically it's removing clay 
But the thing that's super important is that it's only removing from the clay you already put in the scene, okay? For example, if I uh, create a new clay object, so no now I have a cube there, and as you can see, the, the cube that I put in subtractive mode is not removing from this new cube. And why is that? It's because basically the, your order and your hierarchy is super important. If I take the cube that's subtracting, and if I put it after the new cube I created, you will see that now it's really subtracting from everything. So the order of your hierarchy is very important, okay? And uh, there are other ways to manipulate this, but we won't go into this for this video. And okay, this is what we had. So I have the shirt and I have the belly, and now I can adjust a bit how much I want to remove from the shirt just by moving this cube. And I think I'm going to slice a bit the bottom something like this as you can see i really like slicing and rounding spheres i think it makes them really, really interesting okay so this is pretty good and uh, instead of continuing with the body i'm just going to block out the, um, the arms and i think we will do them in different containers because if you need to animate them it would be better if they are separated object so what i'm going to do instead of creating a new container and everything i'm just going to duplicate the body I'm just going to call it uh, arms, okay? And I'm just going to delete everything that's inside. It's exactly the same, I just right click creating a clay container, but I just find it easy to do it like this because I keep my scale, I keep my position and everything. So anyway, so I have my arms, I can add a new clay and it's right in the middle, of course, so you cannot see it. And if I move it there and I put the mirror X, as you can see, I have this mirror perfectly. Remember, remember from the last video, your X axis need to point to the right. And I'm going to move this aside because I don't need it for now. And uh, I'm going to go back to the to the arms and it's a time to just show you another trick of Clexel. Uh, right now, I want to go back quickly to the new object I created, which is the arms. So I cannot select in the scene because the way Clexel is done, it's different from a normal mesh that you could select, for example, this one, you know? but you cannot select Clexel object. And the way to do that is if you hit P on your keyboard, you enter like the peak clay mode actually, and you will see that clay will start highlighting under your cursor and then you can directly select the clay. So you see, I directly selected the clay cubes. If you want to change this hotkey, uh, it may change in the future, but for now uh, you have to go into the Clexel folder and there is a Clexel pref. Yeah, this one, there is a Clexel pref file and you can just uh, change yeah, this hotkey there. Anyway, so P, select the arms, the cube I created, and I'm going to change it for a cylinder. And I'm going to go way faster in this video because a lot of it is going to be exactly the same uh, as you see from the first video. So I'm going to scale it, move it a bit, do approximately arms. And uh, if you look closely to the clay object, we are using a cylinder and not a sphere. And already I have different uh, options um, compared to the sphere, okay? So if I had the sphere, you have the round and the slice. But if I go to the cylinder, I still have the round because it's generic to everyone, but I have the sharp and I have the cone, which do, do not appear in the sphere. And uh, this is what I was saying last video. Every primitive have different options, and I really encourage you to play with them. For now, uh, we are going to play with the cone option. I think it's a, it's a really good option because it allows you to uh, have a taper effect to a cone and it can work both ways. If you go into the negative, if you put negative 100, it's basically like a, a, a cone almost, like a perfect cone. Uh, and you can do the other way around. I think we are going to do something like this. And I want to put the arm red. And instead of trying to, you know, tweak forever and find the right color, but I almost had the perfect color already, uh, I'm going to just select my original uh, shirt and right click copy the color and then right click paste. Another trick you can do is once you have the right color, just click on the little swatch in Unity and you have a new preset that you can select all the time. So I have this and what I can do is just move it a bit inside the body. I'm going to scale it a bit, uh, a bit more so it's a bit more fat. I think like this is okay. And uh, you could ask yourself, like, why didn't we do the arm directly in the body? So we could have the body, you know, blend with the, with the arm and I can show you what it would give us. So this is 
if we had the arm inside of the body container, we could do some stuff like this, which is really, really fine to be honest, but it just, it will make animation way more complex. And I, and I intend to do an animation t tutorial at some point, pro probably with this character. So I think it will make our life easier if the arm is just a separate container. So anyway, let's just continue. As you can see, the, the arm is not a perfect cylinder. There is some kind of, I'm going to draw a bit here. Um, like it's not a straight line, right? If you see, there is some kind of like bulge there, and there is also the I don't know how you call it the end of the of the sleeve sleeve here, yeah? and uh, we want to replicate a bit that to, just to make the shape more interesting. To replicate the sleeve, it's really easy. What I like to do, because I usually do cylinders for arms, I just duplicate it, move it to the approximate end of the arm, and then scale it down. I can remove some of the cone. Okay, something like this, and I can start like blending, blending it with the uh, with the actual arm, and as you can see, it's already looking really good. I'm going to add some of the cone, yeah, something like this is good. And if you think this is um, not detailed enough, you can always go into your clay container and increase the resolution a bit. So I'm going to put 80, and as you can see, uh, I'm going outside of the bound, so I'm just going to increase the bound. And uh, yeah, this is good. And now I want to create a kind of bulge effect, hitting P to select the container. Um, I think a squash sphere would work nicely. And I'm just going to duplicate the cylinder, just move it, move, moving it out of the way so you can see. I'm going to create a sphere. And uh, just to control really my scale, I'm going to just put down one, one, one in the scale. So I just revert all the scaling I did with the cylinder, okay? So I'm going to move it around here and I can crank up the the blend making sure I'm in add mode and now if I scale up the sphere you will see like I'm starting to add, add some kind of muscle to him but I'm going to scale it uh, I'm just going to move it so you can see I'm, I'm, I'm having this kind of shape you know a squashed sphere and I'm going to just play with it it's really you have to play a lot and just see by eyes like what you want to achieve like if if I make this curve too strong it's going to look weird so I'm just going to do something very subtle. I think something like this is pretty okay. What you could even do is just duplicate it so you have another one and you can even scale it down so you have like an even smoother curve. And I think this is pretty good. We can even go into the arms and scale everything up. And of course, everything is moving because we are, we are using the mirror option, mirror option. So I can just go back inside the container, select everything and then replace accordingly. And I think this is pretty okay. What I would like is to add just a bit of um, rotation there, because you know they are straight like this. I kinda want to have them just a bit, you know, like leaning forward. And uh, this is more Unity tips than Clay Excel per se, but you will see that if you try to take all of them and rotate them, depending, depending on what you do, it, you might end up with like well rotation. Uh, you can try to play with the pivot or the wall thing, but it's not perfect. Like what I like to do is you just go inside your clay container, you create an empty object, and uh, I'm going to place it up approximately where the beginning of the arm is. So just rotate your camera to make sure, okay, this is, this is good. And I'm just going to take all of my objects and then parent them to this new game object, okay? So now I have all the arms object linked to this parent. So what I can do is just rotate this just a bit. So now it's looking you know, forward and you actually, actually have a, a bit of a preview of how we are going to animate this, just creating game object like this and then carefully placing your hierarchy and you, it's going to be very easy to animate. But now I have my arms leaning a bit forward. I'm just going to take all of them and put them back in the arms just by dragging and dropping them and remove this because I don't need it for now. And I think we are pretty much done for the arms and I'm just going to add the end in the same object. So I'm just going to duplicate my cylinder. One reason is because it already has the, the right rotation. So when I select it and I move it, and by the way, if your gizmo is like this, it's because you are using the, not the local transform, but the global transform and you can hit X to change or you can just go there and hit local. So now I can, <coughs> sorry, move my cylinder on this you know, local axis, which is really handy. For the end, I think we are just going to use a sphere. And we want the blue color. So what I'm going to do, you guessed, 
just select the head, copy, and actually I'm going to make a preset just to show you how fast is it. Going back to the end and then putting it blue. So now I'm going to adjust the shape a bit. I'm not even sure I'm going to do the, the slicing because I think it's okay, but um, I'm not really liking how it's you know just going right inside the arms. It doesn't feel like there is no depth to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to disable this. Uh, you can click here or you can shift alt A. Like I might have done that a lot before, but shift, uh, shift alt A, enable and disable object. So I'm just going to disable it. And uh, sometimes there is some visual bugs, but don't worry, like if I just create a new object or just do some operation, it usually refresh the, cl refresh the clay, or you can go into the clay container and say, reload all, okay? And now you have your clay up to date. So what I wanted to do was to create a kind of hole inside the, um, the sleeve. I'm just going to, as the same thing, duplicate my first cylinder, which I duplicated like a hundred times now, move it a bit out of the way, scale it down, and I'm going to put it in subtractive mode. And uh, yeah, something like this. And if I play with the blend, you can say I have a smooth kind of transition. And of course, it's going way too far, so it's subtracting a bit of the arm. I'm just going to scale it on the Y axis, move it down. I'm going to remove the cone because it's messing with my scaling. And I think something like this is pretty good. And as you can see, we have like a nice, nice hole in the in the arm. And this would be really annoying to do in like a traditional modeling software, but this is where like volumetric modeling and Clexel in particular really shines. So I'm just going to take back my sphere, which I was using for the end. And one thing, if you noted from before, the sphere is before the, the cylinder. So right now the cylinder is removing from the sphere. So what you can do is just select the sphere and if you go into the order there and you click this button, okay, it's going to move it back. And it's actually the exact same thing as just moving it in the hierarchy. It's just way more handy to just do that. Okay. And I'm just going to scale it down, going in and maybe play with the, with the blend a bit. And I think, yeah, this is way better now. I think we are pretty much done with the arm and uh, I'm just going to let it as is. So let's continue. Uh, so I'm, since I'm not going to touch the arm, I'm just going to lower the clay cell detail a bit to something like 30. So as you can see, it's now very, very rough, but I don't mind because I'm not going to, to work with it. And also just to save a bit of, you know, performance on my computer. Uh, and now I'm going back to the uh, body clay container. And I just want to have a hint of the white belly of the character. So if I just P select this, um, I kind of want to have, I'm just going to draw on screen, have this part being white and there would be multiple ways to do that and I think uh, we are just going to start with let me think Let, let's use a cube for that uh, I'm going to select the body and then add clay if I move it down I have my clay there and what I want to try is use the painter mode so if I select my cube painter now I'm just projecting the the paint okay and I want to use this to create the, this kind of pattern on the on the body and I'm going to place my cube very carefully so it just create what I want and just so you see if I just remove the painter like this is the shape we are using and if sometimes it's just easier to place the shape in normal mode and then activate the painter or just switch back and forth so just going back to painter scale it up and I think this is pretty good I don't want it to go all the way to the back and let's just adjust it a bit. I don't mind if it goes a bit uh, bleeding over the red shirt because I'm going to add something on top of it later. And you can play a bit with the blend, not too much because if I blend too much, you will see it will go toward the shirt, but like it's a bit too far. Let's do something like this. Let's increase a bit the resolution to something like 50. So we have just a better view of what we do. Sometimes you see um, holes in your characters. The first thing you want to make sure, I forgot to mention that before, is select your camera in your scene, so the main camera, and make sure your where is it? Your rendering path is set to def deferred. And if it not if it's not fixed, sometimes it's just a bug from Clexel, and I'm sure it will be fixed in next version. So anyway, let's go back to the body, and I have my cube. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm just going to lower the blend, and now I'm going to just take care of this 
no nasty bleeding there. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy the sphere. So the first one, which is uh, the red sphere, which has the right color and everything. And I'm going to use, uh, let's use a cylinder, because I think that's the new, the new primitive of today. And I'm just going to scale it down and place it just around the edge of the shirt to create some kind of fold uh, in a way. And now if I just increase the blend, not too much, just like this, now we get got rid of the of the seam and we have like a nice a nice volume on the shirt, which is pretty nice. Okay, this is looking good. I kinda want to move a bit the head now because I think it's yeah the position is not perfect. So I'm just going to select the head, the beak, like everything, like the head, beak, lower beak and orange, and just move them a bit. I think like this is good. And I think the arm are too low. And I'm just going to bring them a bit, you know, in. Yeah, this is okay. Anyway, we can always touch all of this later. So just to continue the body, we are going to do let's choose. Let's let's do the little pockets on the chest. It's going to be really easy. We are just going as usual uh, to create a new clay. So I'm just have, I just have a cube. I'm going to put it red, so I just save my color here. So I'm just going to move it to where I think the pocket is, and I'm going to rotate it. And don't forget, you can hit X to change between local and world rotation, which helps a lot when dealing with those kind of placement. And I want kind of a very thin cubes box, and then move it, moving it approximately there. I think I will make it pretty big because I think it will look good from far away. Something like this. And now if I increase the blend, you can see that like it's nicely blending inside. I may rotate it just a bit like this. Okay, this is looking nice. Maybe it's a bit too high. And now what I will do, I want it to be pretty subtle. I'm going to duplicate the cube. So now I have two versions of the pocket. Let me remove the blend altogether to put it very low. So I see more what I'm doing. And I'm going to scale it up just to do the the little fold on the pocket. Let's put it to something like this and I just increase the blend a bit. And now as you can see, okay, no, it's not, not good enough. Yeah, let's go like this. So we did the pocket in like 10 seconds, which is really amazing. We can always tweak all of this, but I think for now it's good. Yeah, good enough. And um, we are going to do quickly the, the color and I'm going to do almost the same thing, so just create a clay, so now I have a cube. And you can see once you have all those primitive and all your colors and everything, like it really flows, uh, which is the part I like. Like once once you are in, like it goes really fast. So I'm just going to take my cube, put a mirror X, because as you can see, like the color is a symmetrical thing. Scale it down, I'm going to rotate it, and basically just going to use this shape to define like just a visible part of the color. Because of course, if you hide the head, like you will see this weird thing, but like we don't care because nobody is ever going to see that. Well, you, you just saw it, but don't tell anyone. I'm just going to increase the blend a bit, scale it, just play with the shape until you think it looks good. And you know, from far away, like you think it's pretty convincing, maybe a bit too far, scale it up. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And I think now the pocket is a bit too high. Just moving it a bit down. Yeah, we're good. Uh, one other thing we can do is doing the, the fold in the middle of the shirt. And to do that, we are going to use, uh, let's use a cylinder, because I think it will fit nicely. Uh, so at clay, I'm going to put it as a cylinder, move it out of the way so we can see. What I want to do is, if I just draw quickly, I want to place the cylinder like kind of like this. So it just will blend there and create a little bump. So let's try this. I'm just going to rotate my cylinder, hitting control to get a, a snap rotation. Going to squish it a bit like this and then scale it up and trying to place. I'm keeping it white so I can see really what I'm doing. Let's try something like this, scaling non-uniformly. And yeah, this is pretty good. Just so you can see the shape it's basically looking like this. Okay. 
and if I just reload all, okay. Now I will just put this cylinder red, just like the rest of the shirt, and I'm going to blend with the rest of the shirt. And as you can see, it works really nice. Maybe just, it's a bit too much. And I think like this, we are really good. Yeah, okay, calling this done. Uh, what, wait, actually no. <laughs> Now it's almost, uh, yeah, now it's done. Uh, what we can do now is add the little buttons. To be honest, you could do them just with Unity spheres. Like if I do it really quickly, you can just just create a bunch of spheres and, and squash them. And I think this would be actually a better idea because if we do it with clay cell and we create, we create a clay, put it in sphere mode and we move it around you will see that the lower we go, you know, it will ha it will be hard to retain that kind of detail. But at this point, it's really up to you. Like, do you want to stay with Clexel and work around the limitation, or just mix and match both, uh, you know, Clexel and Unity spheres? Just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to keep with spheres. But for me, I would just use uh, spheres, like normal Unity spheres. I mean, so. But just for the exercise, let's try to do them with. Um, Excel spheres I'm going to increase a bit my resolution so I'm at 50 let's put 70 and as you can see I'm going out of bounds what I can do is increase the scales and just a quick tip in, in instead of just hitting the plus button which will increase the bounds in all direction you can actually just manually type which direction you want to increase on and as you can see the the y direction like I don't I don't mind because I don't have any details I just want more resolution on the x which is the sides and on the Z axis, which is like the depth. So this will be more performant for my computer. I'm just going to take this little white sphere, put it there. And yeah, it's pretty, pretty stretch on the, on the original character. Let's see, this is pretty good. I'm just going to duplicate it a bunch of times and making sure the blend is at zero because I don't want any blend with it. But you will still have like a tiny blend. This is inherent. Like if you want no blend at all, just use a Unity Sphere or just uh, create a new container. But I don't mind to be honest because at the end we will crank up the resolution and we won't see this anymore. Scale up a bit and then the last button. This is pretty good, yeah. I'm doing less buttons than in the, the image, sorry, because I think it looks good like this. And we are not going to do the stripes. I try to do them, but it's really complex to do with this kind of modeling uh, mentality. But you can try to do them. It's a really good challenge. But uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not up to it. Uh, I think we are done with, uh, with the chest. And uh, I'm just going to polish a bit of stuff until the end. You can skip directly to the end to see, like, uh, to hear what we're going to do next. But for now, I'm just going to polish a bunch of stuff. So let's increase a bit the resolution on the arm. I'm just going to put. 80, yeah, 80 is good. And uh, I'm just going to select the original uh, cylinder and just going to scale it just a bit. Maybe move this sphere around. Yeah, I think this is a bit better now. Not perfect, but yeah, I think I can live with that. I think the sleeve is too, too large. Going to scale it down. Maybe pl play with the roundness a bit. Maybe blending just a bit less. I think like this is pretty good and I need to adjust this cylinder. Okay. And then my hand. I think we are good, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm happy with it. Um, I think I'm going to adjust a bit the pocket because I didn't like the way it looks from the side. Now actually it's good. I think we are just going to add a little a kind of bonus detail because I, I didn't see it the first time but now I'm seeing it like there is some kind of little uh, not dent but uh, like a separation in the shirt and uh, just to thank you thank you for seeing me just tweaking my clay for like minutes I'm just going to add a new detail so body we're going to add a clay and I think the easiest way is going to just put it in subtractive mode Yep, going inside the shirt. 
and actually no it, is it a good idea i'm not sure anyway we'll see uh, i'm going to we need to have like some kind of uh, i want to show you the, the shape i want to do i want the shirt to do something like this okay and i think we will use a cylinder i'm just going to put it back to add mode so you can see because the cylinder is a very interesting shape like it's it you can do way more than just a cylinder with it and if we take the cone option and put it to minus 100 you have some kind of perfect cone and you can even like you know squish it and you have some weird shape like it's it's really really useful and what i want to do is actually subtract a bit of the shirt but what i'm going to do is using the blue color of the of the body so that way when i subtract it looks like the body will be behind and this will require some careful placement we'll see how it goes the the gizmo when you are in subtractive mode can look a bit weird but uh, yeah i still don't not sure how it works to be honest let's add a bit of blending i think it's pretty good let's see from zero oh if i put it on mirror x now i have it on both sides just removing my lighting i swear the video is coming uh, i'm going to move this i think this is pretty good yeah okay i'm happy with it how does it look yeah it adds a bit of detail it breaks a bit the shape it's, it's pretty nice i'm just going to tweak the the fold in the in the end of the shirt just get it down a bit and uh, like this it's good okay and now we are done with the shirt uh, just checking if we forgot anything so we have the arms we have the shirt the buttons the pockets the little collar and i think that's it yeah and uh, we only have the feet to do and um, i think we will be done so hey if you made it this far we sh you should have done the body the arms and this is what we have um, one thing that has been bothering me since the last video is the color of the orange and i just want to show something quick if you select the orange and you um, unroll the, the material you have like specific option and this is really unique to this material so i can just go into the emission <coughs> and add like an emission value and it just i think it will look better with a bit of orange anyway i will cover this in a specific tutorial but for now yeah it was bothering me <laughs> So we are done with the body and uh, I think we are just going to finish this last episode and it will be just the feet and we are going to do a cute little base maybe and uh, yeah that's it maybe we'll do just a turnaround animation not a character animation this will come later but uh, I hope you enjoyed it please ask me in the comments if you have any questions or if you would like to see some specific tutorial click sale or not and uh, yeah that's it see you next time